Um, how many of you are hungover right now? Hung, hungover. How many of you stayed out too late last night and you have a massive headache? Okay. We just don't have focus. <laughs> That's coming after this. I'll get through this quickly so you can go. <laughs> All right. Well, um, hopefully this will wake you up a bit. I tried to be funny. Uh, I don't know how well that's going to work. Right, <laughs> um, it's Joomla. We've all been there. It's going to be the same tomorrow. But today, I am going to be talking about the developer's experience. Um, this is slightly related to what I was talking about yesterday, but you'll find it's a, a little bit different because it's about developers. In case any of you weren't there yesterday, my name is Crystal. I'm a user experience consultant with my company, Lucid Fox. Uh, easiest way to get in touch with me is to contact me on Twitter at Crystalenka or crystal at lucid-fox.com. Um, you don't have to worry about taking notes because everything is recorded and I'm going to be tweeting a link to slides with minimal um, speaker notes later. So. <clears throat> if you really want to, go for it. Okay. It's just me. Okay. <laughs> but don't feel obligated to. Also, I'd like to make a disclaimer. I realize that this is a developer track. I realize that developer is in the session title. But I am not a developer. <laughs> I dabble in front end stuff. I do semantic HTML. I'm really good at CSS actually and SAS and less and all of that. But I realize at Joomla conferences that doesn't necessarily fall into the category developer. I don't do backend stuff. So, but what I am good at is uh, translating the uh, black magic developer speak into something users understand and translating what they need back to developers. So I feel like I'm, I'm somewhat qualified to be here. Um, Again, since we're all hungover, and uh, it's been a while since yesterday, just as a quick refresher, use UX is user experience. It's all about um, how people perceive their experiences and their feelings and emotions that stem from interacting with your product. And just knowing your users is the most important thing. But you write code, you still have users, and I'm not talking necessarily about the end user, the person who uses the front end website or extension or through Joomla's back end. I'm actually talking about people who get into the code. These are hidden users, these are users that people don't necessarily think about. I think if you attended the Joomla 4 session yesterday, it might have come up briefly, um, or so I heard. Uh, but it, it is true that, that other developers and everything are, are hidden users of the code. There's more than just that, though. Um, when you're submitting pull requests and everything, you have the, uh, the other developers. Yeah, no shit. I get it. Um, but also, code reviewers. These are the people who are going through pull requests, making, your making sure your code doesn't have obvious mistakes, follows um, coding standards, and seeing if there's any hidden problems. There are testers. Particularly on Joomla, if you've ever um, tested any code on issues.joomla.org, um, some people are testing it to make sure it does as advertised. And if they find errors, they might want to do you a favor and get into your code and, and say, uh, this is what's going on. This is why this error is coming up here. This is how you fix it. Um, there are also <coughs> the site integrators. These are the people who are building the front end site functionality. Um, but they might be getting into the code to create layout overrides, or maybe because their project has some requirements that your extension might not 100% meet, and they want to extend that functionality for their, uh, for their single project. Also, something that not a lot of people think about, future employers are going to be looking at your code. Um, Particularly recently, I think there's a lot of headhunters going through GitHub and just looking through code, looking for people who write it well and um, are trying to recruit exclusively through that. 
So the Joomla module that you wrote five years ago might be your ticket to a dream job and you would never know it. And also, you, in the future, you're going to have to go back and reference this code. Again, you're going to have to figure out why you did that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what, for what purpose everything was. And this all seems pretty straightforward, I know. But um, I think that people know that they should care. It's hard to sometimes connect that with reality. But it's actually part of your responsibility of contributing to open source. I mean, Joomla is an open source community. It's why we're all here. Um, you don't necessarily have to contribute to core Joomla to be part of an open source ecosystem. If you're building extensions or even templates on Joomla, you have created open source code by default. And you need to care about the people who are getting into your code. It's, it's part of the spirit of open source. It's why we're here this weekend. It's why we're all hung over today. Um, but it's, it's just part of being a good person. If that's not enough, if, if just having it be the right thing to do isn't enough for you to care about the code you're writing and, and how you're writing it, um, just think about if you w really want to be the reason someone has a shitty day uh, because they can't, try, they can't figure out why this block of code works. Um, you'll never, ever, be the only person looking at this code. Uh, I, I know it might just be one single tiny commit. It, it, people, people look at this stuff. And even if you are, you are not going to remember what you did 10 years from now. Like, how many of you have seen code that you wrote and thought, I didn't do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've all been there. I just wanted to make it unseen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there's a great quote from Terminator, there is no faith but what we make for ourselves. So if you're not thinking about, what? It's Terminator 3, I checked this, I double checked it. Um, <laughs> uh, it you're, you're going to be going through this again. Don't be the reason that future you has a shit day. So, why I'm here and talking is because it's possible to bring some UX principles and UX thinking into development and um, make it easier on yourselves and other people. So keep these things in the back of your mind when you're finding a solution to something. And a lot of this is situational. So who is going to be going through this? Why are they going to be looking at this? What, for what purpose would they possibly ever open that file? When are they going to be going through it? And what mindset are they going to be in? Just to give you a quick example, um, it's almost like a use case, like uh, what some of what we were talking about yesterday. Um, an integrator might need to get into an e-commerce plugin to create a layout override for a product template. They might be on a t tight deadline, super stressed. If uh, this plugin is not very well organized or has some strange magical stuff going on, uh, it'll be really stressful for them because they won't be able to figure it out and they'll basically have to reverse engineer the code. Or if you do what's right and you document it thoroughly, you comment it thoroughly, uh, it'll take them a fraction of a second to figure out and your hidden user, this person who is in your code, will be very happy and I'm sure will be using your product again. So, <clears throat> I would like to go through a few things that my developer friends tend to complain about a lot. Mostly so that they shut up about it. <laughs> I love you guys, but it gets old listening to the same stuff over and over and over again. I realize that a lot of this is going to be pretty obvious. Some of you might even say it's not worth mentioning. But if you are complaining about it, I'm, I'm like, it, that means people are still doing it. So I'm just going to go through it anyway. Um, and as we go through each of these, I want you to raise your hand if, uh, if you've seen this and if it drives you crazy too. Lack of unclear or completely useless comments. Raise your hand. You know these types. Like, either there are no comments at all, 
or there's a comment for an if-then statement, and then there's like a hundred lines of black magic, and <laughs> no one knows what's going on. Um, or, or there are comments that are just completely useless, have nothing to do with the code, and it's just like, hi, hello, I'm here. I'm not gonna tell you why, <laughs> but hi. It's a comment, it counts. Um, yeah, make sure your comments are useful, that it actually has something to do with what you're doing. Don't explain the obvious stuff, like if x then y, don't comment. If x, then y. I've seen this, it doesn't make sense. Two, anarchy. Code that completely disregards the style of the file it's in. Someone else came in and said, I'm gonna do what I want here. My style is best. I don't care the rest of the file is using spaces. I'm gonna use tabs. Um, disregards any code guidelines for uh, any, a project level or a company level. Yes, you can do what you want if you're creating the original file or the original project, but if there are standards, keep to it because it keeps it easier to read for people. Three, massive unorganized files. Okay, raise your hand if you have seen files longer than 3,000 lines. All right, 5,000. 5,000 lines. <laughs> we have 5,000. Raise your hand. 10,000. 10,000. 15,000 lines. Yeah, it's easy there, yeah. 15, all right. Was there any kind of organization in these files? No. Sort of doesn't count when it's like five digits of lines. That's really, really. That's not what I, I want I, to I, hear. I think, think the person who wrote this very long code just started with the first task, then, oh, I have to slow this, and then it's getting below that. So it has some kind of order. Chronologically, I, yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if there's a bug on line 9,999, I don't want to have to read the previous code to figure out why. <laughs> but sometimes you just also find comments like, Dear future me, please forgive me, it's 3 a.m. and the deadline was yesterday. No. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've also seen this in CSS a lot because, like I said, I'm more familiar with it. There's 10,000 line CSS files out there where oh. someone saw the design file and they said, Okay, well, this is the logo, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then they started going, All right, this is element home-sidebar-one, element home-sidebar-two, and then even if the same thing was on a different page, they would just continue like doing individual code blocks for each and every, it, absolute nightmare. Oh. Um, it leads to a lot of duplicated code as well. So this is a huge pet peeve, and it actually adds like bloat, it makes it longer for things to load. Um, don't, don't do that, organize your code, think it through. If you have a 3 a.m. deadline, then refactor it later, dude. Uh, just if it's getting paid. <laughs> I'm no. sorry. I'm Open honest. source. Good person, <laughs> right? Um, okay. Lack of documentation. And I'd like to make a uh, quick, uh, clear up a quick mi misconception. Documentation does not mean that you're re reverse engineering the code. Uh, that, that's not what documentation <laughs> is. Um, yeah, how, how, do, you, do you guys work with a lot of stuff that does not have documentation? Joomla. Yeah. <laughs> what about, what about oh. we have too much documentation? <laughs> That's also a... <laughs> <laughs> For those of you watching from home... I want to read the title, I don't want to read the epic saga. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a tale of two cities. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they can't read the fucking manual unless you've written it first. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about sagas right now. That might, that might go into that. <laughs> it's best, and I know that all of you know this. This is obvious stuff. It's best to document as you go along, as you have the thought process in, in mind, because I realize that when you are coming up with a solution, you have like 10 different gears turning in your head at a time, and so things link together in your head, and it all makes sense when you write it. And if you don't document it, then that thought process could potentially be lost forever. Um, 
And remember Mythbusters. If it's not science if you don't write it down. <laughs> yeah. Five, over engineering. Uh, you're not impressing anyone. You're not the next Martin Fowler. Uh, the, 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 you, don't don't overcomplicate things. You need to keep it simple. The simple solution is the best one. Um, in classic design, not necessarily functional design, but I think it still applies, and I think it applies to many other fields too. Uh, they say that it's done when you can't remove anything else. Um, so just keep it, do the most simple, obvious solution, because it's easier for you, it's faster, and uh, it's easier for people who are coming after you. Six, write only code. This is the code where the guy thought it would be a good idea to use a password manager to, uh, to generate his variable names. <laughs> you get like alphanumeric variables, or uh, the one who decided to rehearse the alphabet by saying variable A, variable B, variable C, A, A, B, B, C, C. Um, <laughs> you get it when you write it, and then you come back to it, and you're like, what? <laughs> What, what does this variable mean? I don't understand. Name your variables sensibly. This goes for class names too. If you're, if you're doing like HTML and CSS, do it sensibly. Um, <laughs> please no alphanumeric ones. That it actually exists. Like, just don't. Make it readable. You should be able to scan this code and figure out what it does and possibly where it applies um, without having to like blow your brains out. <clears throat> Seven, alpha code. Again, another obvious one, but even the best of us uh, slip up. Don't publish without testing it. Your users are not your quality assurance. They're uh, in the, actually a recent example, there's um, a certain very popular extension that has released four times in the past week. Um, <laughs> because when uh, the release happened, the floodgates of support tickets opened. <laughs> Let me tell you that that's not a fun thing. So test your code thoroughly, particularly if you have a massive extension that everyone uses, uh, and avoid that situation because it's stressful for everyone involved, especially yourself. Hippie code, free love. Uh, I realize Joomla is the hippie CMS. That doesn't mean we should be giving everything away for free. This is code lacking any security considerations at all whatsoever. Some of you might be familiar with this XKCD strip. I don't know if it's oh, yeah. readable. <laughs> Little Bobby Tables, his full name is Robert Drop Table Students. Uh, sanitize your <laughs> database. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't be the hippie when it comes to security. Everything else, I don't care, but, but, but uh, do security properly. Joomla is by far the best, most secure CMS, so don't compromise it with bad code. That's, I think, most of what my friends complain about, uh, possibly. I don't know, guys. <laughs> But basically what it all amounts to is to just be a good developer. You know, this stuff is fairly obvious, it's straightforward, and yet somehow it all slips through the cracks. So just remember that your hidden users exist. There are gonna be other people going through your code. It's not just you. Um, and it could, even if it is just you, it's future you. You're not the same person today that you were yesterday, and you certainly don't think the same way. So make things easier on yourself. <clears throat> think about why people will be looking at this. If it's a situation when they're like only possibly going to be getting into this file, if it's like super panic mode and it's absolute disaster end of the world and they, there's no other reason why they would be opening this file. Code with that in mind, be kind to them. Um, document the shit out of it. Like just, I realize it takes just a little bit of extra time but it, it makes things easier on yourself and it'll save you time in the future. So it, it net, it makes more sense. And revisit often and refactor early. If you have a 3 a.m. deadline, 
That wasn't me. <clears throat> that wasn't me. That was sure. a friend of mine. I'm not, I'm not a developer. I'm not a developer. <laughs> okay. Um, but seriously, though, it's a perfect example. If you have a 3 a.m. deadline, you have to come up with a solution. You're not going to be doing your best work. You're going to be coming up with something that's possibly too complicated, possibly doesn't work as well as it should, and it's certainly not organized the way it should be. So revisit it a little bit later when you're in a better state of mind. Refactor it and make it work better. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in 10 years going at this going, what is this? That wasn't me. That couldn't possibly have been me. Are you just going to still run in 10 years? I'm impressed. <laughs> in this case, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, doesn't apply. And basically, just code in the spirit of open source. We're an open source community. We are all here for each other. We're, this is the J-positive moment of this talk. Um, <laughs> no groans from the back, come on. Um, Really, though, otherwise we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here in Barcelona. We wouldn't be here having fun with our friends. Uh, this, this weekend is about being a family, right? So be kind to other people in this open source community. You're, you're contributing even if you don't realize it. So keep that in mind when you're working and bring it into your day to day. And uh, that's all I got. Peace. <laughs>